Hey everybody, it is March 30th or thereabout. Uh, we are the Board Game Mechanics. I am Joel, and with me as always is... Hey, it's Jason. What's going on? We got a thousand listens this week. That's what's up. Yeah. Well, I mean, that seems like a big deal for us. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Shoot. I mean, only nine episodes in and already broke the thousand listen mark. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, it is. And we're nobodies. So that feels really good, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> However, we are on, I think, day 36 now of the we're not on the This Game is Broken podcast. So uh, that's that feels bad, but we'll get there. We'll that, get there. That's true. Yeah. Eventually, we'll break them down and they'll have to let us on. Until then, we'll yeah, we'll just persevere. <laughs> Certainly. So I'm trying to think what else happened around the shop this week. I don't know, actually, but I do have a funny story about when I got my tire um, changed on Saturday. Okay. Yeah, so I was I was at the um, the tire place, and this guy came in and wanted me to give him a ride because he ran out of gas. And I was like, sure, I'll give you a ride. But then a deputy sheriff comes in and says, hey, you need to come outside. And she put him in cuffs and put him in the back of the seat, the back of the car, and drove off. Well, I think you dodged the bullet there. <laughs> yeah. So looking back on it, I'm glad I didn't have to uh, give that guy a ride. <laughs> not not game related, but I thought it was an interesting story, so I wanted to share. That's definitely an interesting story. And I think uh, beyond that, I was in my mind going, does Jason remember we talk about primarily board games and not like mechanical <laughs> things? Or I was hoping you remembered that. I was tying in the board game mechanics theme. I was tying in the board game mechanics theme this week, and it only took 10 episodes, and we finally got a tie-in. Well, and, like, people kind of question, like, why are you guys the board game mechanics? Well, it's because, like, I think the idea is we're just average guys. I don't even think blue collar is the right word, because I don't think either one of us are really blue collar. But, (laughs) I mean, like, (laughs) I don't know, and I don't think our taste in games are blue collar either. It's not like we could go home and play, like, Risk and Munchkin. I don't know, but, like, I think it's just the idea is that we're average guys. Like we don't have a library of eight thousand games that we full time play all the time. I mean, we're just regular dudes like you guys who, you know, we go out and we work our job, and then we come home and we hope to play a few games on the weekend. So, anyway, that's kind of what we are, I guess. But um, anyway, right. anyway, well, hey, that's uh, that's cool, man. I'm glad you didn't end up being an accomplice <laughs> to some kind of crime. Yeah, me too. That could have been interesting. That could have been a different story and may have delayed a few episodes of the podcast. All right, Jason, what's happening in news? It doesn't seem like, I don't know, it feels like this time of year is kind of like slow. Yeah, I I was browsing on Kickstarter and there was just nothing that caught my eye this week, but I did find one that I thought was kind of interesting. And it's from Hasashi Hiyashi, who did Yokohama, or Yokohama, Oklahoma, <laughs> Yokohama, <laughs> Trains, and Sail to India. And it's also by Seiji Kanai of Love Letter, Lost Legacy, My Star, and Unicornus Knights fame. And it's called Deca Slayer, The Ten Trials. Huh. So, based on what I know of these two designers, you're doing some kind of Dominion-like deck building... And then using that deck to play a micro game on a board with cubes. I don't know. No, I sure it's not that. But that's just I'm trying to combine trains and love letter. And the only one that combine trains and love letter and Lost Legacy <laughs> all together. I don't know. Yeah, it looks just like a card game where you're battling beasties or something. It doesn't have a ton of cards in typical love letter style. So it seemed kind of interesting. Not something that I'll probably be backing. But of all the games that I looked at, the only one that kind of you know, caught my attention this week. I'm going to go ahead and use this opportunity to hijack this topic to talk about trains because I don't know. That's a game that I think is worth talking about at some point and it won't ever come up. Um, It's, (laughs) it's, it's an okay game. This one's got a little age on it now, but I mean, like, I don't know. I, I think personally, I'd probably rather play it than dominion. Um, But I, this sounds crazy, but I think the graphic design of that game kind of turned me off a little bit. Honestly, I don't know. Like, isn't 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 that just a deck builder with a board where you're putting like cubes on the board and stuff? Yeah, and um, basically the mechanic on it that's kind of cool is that you create it, but it's like seriously, the cards are almost in some ways a one to one representation of Dominion cards, um, and then like basically you just have these additional cards that let you put down cubes as a train track or build a station, 
And so that's how you hmm. score points is by having tracks and stations that are connected and stuff. But right. it's kind of a neat game. Um, back when I was doing board game stuff, like more seriously, like I hope we get there again with this thing. But this is one of the cooler review copies of games I got is they sent that to me. AEG did. But um, I don't know. I, I think that always will give it kind of like a nice place in my heart a little bit. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it's just a deck builder. It's and it's I just guess that I think. uh like his name is like it looks like phonetically in English it would be Deca Slayer, like that's the awesomest name ever for a person. But um, wait, that's not true. Deca Slayer is the name of the game. That's an Correct, I thought yeah. that was the designer's yeah. name for. That's an Correct, I thought yeah. that was the designer's yeah. name for a second. I was like, wait a minute, no, his name's Deca Slayer. <laughs> that's amazing. Like I'm gonna buy every one yeah. of his games. His Hisashi Hiyashi is what it looks like to me. Um, it's cool that he made trains in Yokohama, and I never knew that before this minute, like, or this episode. That those games seem really different. Um, Yokohama though seems really cool to me. Yeah, the only one of his that I've played is Sail to India, which is just like thirteen cards and some cubes. But it's an amazing game. It's actually like a full game in a little tiny box. It's amazing. Huh. Well, that's cool. Uh, not So not a ton of news. I, I guess this is kind of a laughable thing of news. Um, I forget the name of the company, but they're the ones that made Super Dungeon Explorer. It's not Soda Pop Miniatures or Cool Mini or not. It's the other company that was involved with that. They had a Kickstarter where they did um, Super Dungeon Explorer Legacy. And I've got just base Super Dungeon Explorer. It's an all right, all right game. I mean, it's like it fills my one versus all dragon crawl, dungeon crawl kind of thing uh, in right. my collection. But they came out today or yesterday and said, we think Kickstarter is a toxic medium and we aren't going to use it anymore. And it's just uh, <laughs> kind of a funny statement because they're two years behind on their most recent project. And like, it's just a real mess that they just mishandled their project so badly. And now they're trying to blame Kickstarter. So I don't know. It's just interesting. I, I think this year, 2018, it'll be interesting to go back and listen to these early episodes in 2018 and just see like, we didn't know about these awesome games that came out is one fun thing, but that are going to come out of Origins and Gen Con and Essen. But the other thing, too, is I think that we'll see a significant shift this year in how Kickstarters are done and what happens with Kickstarter. Like Either it's going to become solidified as a really viable medium for people to, to pre-order games, or it's going to become... It's going to start backfiring a little bit, one way or the other, firing a little bit. And I could see it going one way or the other, honestly, at this point. I mean, I know some people, you and I in particular, um, have talked about, it feels like a lot of gimmicks come out on Kickstarter and they get instantly funded. Oh, I guess one one more interesting thing. Um, we're going to be doing an interview with Shim Phillips of Raiders of the North Sea, Architects of the West Kingdom. That's going to be coming out. Well, it's going to be happening next week, so we'll see what episode it drops in, but... That was another piece of information that I thought was interesting. That's awesome. And I mean, like, we are getting way disproportionately awesome interviews for who we are. This is like the second interview that I'm like, whoa, that is really cool that we got him to interview with us. So I don't know. I hope I hope that people start to understand, uh, hey, those board game mechanic guys are kind of all right. Let's go do our interview with them. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're hoping. That's we'll see. Maybe after we get Jamie Stegmeyer on shortly, we'll be super legit. Yeah. Well, I used to be the uh, the Jamie S fanboy of fanboys, and I still am. <laughs> but if I have to really like pledge my allegiance to somebody, it's it's going to Philip now, man. That guy's just awesome. That's true. He is really cool. And I just called him Philip. Like we're on a first name basis with him. And if you listen <laughs> to the show, you should just know who Philip is. So anyway, that's true. <laughs> so jason you posted a picture in the riveted which showed you broke 100 plays this last weekend which is astounding for me to see that already i and i felt like i'm playing a lot this year and i'm at 80 so wow over 100 already that's pretty pretty awesome so speaking of playing games what did you get a chance to play this last weekend all right, so the first game I played this weekend was a game that I've had on my shelf for like two years, and I can't play it, and that game is Shogun. Not the old Game Master's version, but the Durkin one with the cool cube tower, the Euro game that is disguising itself as a war game. That that cube tower, the El Grande type cube tower, 
I always thought was kind of a cool thing in it. But the reason why this game to me has kind of like, I don't know how to explain my feelings with this game. The, there's the old Game Masters game called Shogun, which became like Samurai Swords or something like that. I don't know. And then like, and then there's Wallenstein in Shogun. And like, I think they're a different game. And like, I don't know, like I need to play this one, but I've played the old Shogun, like the old 1985 or 86 version of the game. And someone like raved about it. They were like, oh, this game is so good. It's the best <laughs> thing ever. Let's play it on my birthday. I love it so much. Yeah. <laughs> and like, he seriously loves this game so much. And it's got to be 100% nostalgia feels, man. Because probably. Oh my gosh, that old game is not very good, man. It's basically Risk, but you have. Oh my gosh, that old game is not very good, man. It's basically Risk, but you have little dudes on a plaque instead or something. I don't know. So this game, though, it looks way cooler. So it's got a Euro kind of thing going on for it really honestly right it's essentially uh, the the whole premise of the game is you're programming 10 moves ahead so you have 10 cards 10 spaces on your board you have to program all the movements at the beginning of the turn but you only know the order that five of the things are happening so you're trying to plan ahead and hopefully you're not going to run out of money when you need to like buy more troops to get on the board and you're trying to make sure that all your planning is not wasted and that you're attacking when you should attack and you don't, you know, overextend yourself and someone comes in and wipes you out. It's, it's really interesting. And I don't even like war battle games, but this one was so random that it was essentially like non-existent. So it didn't bother me as much. So it's like robo rally meets thing that you do. Well, of the, of the 10 spaces or actions that you can program, only two of them are actually, attacking so i can deal with that and you you don't even have to do it you can put down like bluff cards that make it look like you're going to attack twice but you really may not even attack at all so i mean it, it it's it's on my alley and i dig it and i definitely can't wait to play it again it was well worth the two-year wait really so this is something that's going to keep in your you're going to keep in your collection then after playing it oh yeah i haven't even busted out any, any of the expansions yet i only played base game so I got to try some of the expansions here on the next play. So I'm going to do a little uh, literary device called foreshadowing and say that may not be the case for one of the games later coming up in this list. Um, because <laughs> Yes, that, that is true. <laughs> my copy of this game is actively on the for trade list, too. So <laughs> anyway, uh, all right. My game that I want to talk about first is... Um, because <laughs> yes, that that is true. <laughs> my copy of this game is actively on the for trade list too. So <laughs> anyway, uh, all right. My game that I want to talk about first is uh bunny kingdom. Uh, I got a chance to play this with four people. Uh, and it actually plays really cool with four people with two people. You have to do this thing where you discard a card and then put down a card. I think is how it works with four people. You're drawing two cards out of the hand playing them down and then passing the rest of the hand over. Um, and so it's just a lot cooler because there's half the cards essentially go unclaimed in um, a two player game. This one was way tighter and way more like you had to really worry about trying to get the cards you could get when you could get them. Um, but this is definitely my go-to card drafting game at this point. Um, it's just really cool how it all works. It's uh, you know, it's like battleship meets seven wonders with like some other little cute cards in there and stuff. And the bunny kingdom figured out how to make your little like cloisters or whatever you want to call them. Um, like score more points that you don't want one huge one, but you want a few just kind of powerful ones. So played bunny kingdom again, really enjoyed it. Really good with four players. Uh, I would probably say this is one that if it were a deal of the day or something at, at uh, cool stuff or something, I would probably suggest it to about anybody who likes card drafting. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I'm not huge on card drafting, but this game, it does have little bunnies, and they look, they look kind of cute, and the board looks pretty sweet after it's all set up. So, yeah, I think I kind of want to give this one a try as well. Yeah, it's uh, it's worth playing once at least. I think you'd like it, actually, Jason. It's, I don't know, It's it's uh, it kind of reminds me of a good version of the game you're going to talk about next, honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, a game that has the word kingdom in the title that... <laughs> Has another name, another word after it called Builder, Kingdom Builder. Oh, let's talk about next. Honestly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, a game that has the word Kingdom in the title that <laughs> has another name, another word after it called Builder, Kingdom Builder. Oh, so rough. <laughs> I had my I had my friend who came over. 
I, I wanted to play it because everybody's played it and I've never played it. So I thought, you know, I need to try this and see what it's like. Was it then his I realized, copy of Kingdom Builder? Yes, he got it when it was on Amazon for like eight bucks that one time. Yeah, I got it at the same time too. <laughs> so we started setting it up. Like the board looks kind of cool. You get all these, you know, cool little houses. I like wooden bits, so that was cool. And then you get a hand of one card and you play that one card. You make no decision right. Right. except where to put on that terrain type. It is atrocious. Like... I tried to like it, and it was kind of fun just because, you know, you're messing around and talking to some other people. But, yeah, there's there's no game in that box. Absolutely no game in that box. This is my second copy. This game existed, the space this game existed in, is it's it's Donald X, you know, Dominion, game of the decade, last decade probably. Um, right. He puts this game out, okay? And this game is just pretty phenomenal. Um for its time, Dominion I'm talking about. And then all of a sudden he has a second game come out that most people know about, which is Kingdom Builder. And this thing, before it even hits the, you know, like shores of the United States with any kind of widespread distribution, at least like no one, this is back, you know, this is 10 years ago when maybe not quite 10 years ago, but like eight years ago, six years ago, something like that. Back when, you know, like board game news was a lot different. And back when like board game distribution was different, we, we didn't know a lot about this game except for it won the spiel. So like it won the Spiel de de Yaris or whatever it's called. And it's from the guy who made Dominion. And all of a sudden, like we have to like go out and blind buy a copy of this essentially um, because there's not really great reviews of anything yet. So I I get it on my Christmas list. I get a copy for Christmas. I play it and I go, I don't understand how this is even really a game. This is like kind of an activity maybe, (laughs) but like I don't understand how this is a game. And then, and then, like, I sell my copy, I trade it because it's still kind of hot, and I get something decent out of it. And then I see all these people, like, in the years since talk about how they love this game. And I'm like, man, maybe I missed something in this game. I don't know. So I bought another copy when they had, like, the Queen Games blowout on Amazon one time, and, and Kingdom Builder made it on there for, like, I don't remember. I think I made it pay, like, $11 for my copy or something. But I got a copy again. I cracked it open with one of my students, actually. Uh, they, like, you know, had a chance to earn a little free time or something. So I thought, ah, this is, a, this is a pretty light little game. Let's play it. And, like, the kid was like, are we playing this right? Because this doesn't feel <laughs> like we're playing a game. I just, like, I have, th- like, three choices here. Like, and if I can't. if That I, you're trying. The kid was like, are we playing this right? Because this doesn't feel <laughs> like we're playing a game. I just, like, I have, th- like, three choices here. Like, and if I can't. If I can put it next to where I have like a little village at, I have to. So it's like half the time your choice is made for you. Like it's just not a very good game. Yeah, I mean, the, honestly, the only thing that even makes that kind of a game at all is the goal cards. You have three goal cards that you're trying to accomplish somehow. Outside of that, you're putting your piece where you're told to put your piece by the one card you have, and then you're just hoping that you score some points. Right. Yeah. I, I didn't like it at all. Right. It's pretty rough, man. So Kingdom Builder, you played it. You can mark it off your like bucket list in the same way people put go to prison or the drunk tank for a night on their bucket list and check it off. <laughs> so. Right. Yeah. I think I would have rather done that. And this is when you've played too. Um, I got a chance to play Clans of Caledonia on, uh, over the weekend. And yeah, that's a good one. I love it. I played it with two players. I think it might even be better with more than two, honestly. Um, but even with two, it played fairly well. Um, I really enjoy it. And it's, I, I think everything you've said about it is pretty accurate. Like you've basically described it as Terra Mystica without like any kind of conflict and like maybe smooth that a little, but not as heavy. Right. And I think that's probably fair. Um, so I, I really do enjoy it. But you know, it almost reminded me a little bit like with the little contracts and exports board. A little bit of that part of uh, Voyages of Marco Polo, like to a degree. Um, oh, yeah. I can see that a little bit. Yeah. Because the tiles are like the same size, roughly. And like the one half is what you pay and the other half is what you get. I don't know. I just saw that connection right. a little right. bit. But I really enjoyed it. Um, I like I don't think I'm a high conflict player. Like I just don't think I am. But a part of me just wanted to like be able to like like – Recruit an army in that game still somehow, but I don't think that's coming. I think it's a pretty peaceful right. little game where you have neighbors and you love your neighbors and trade with them at a discount, yeah. you know? So, well, I mean, I played it at three players and it was still, I mean, there wasn't any conflict at all. You were just, 
mooching off of people's goods when you park next to them. But I don't know. I I still think I like Terra Mystica better. I know Clans is like the new, the hotness right now, but I like the the heaviness of Terra Mystica a little better. Yeah, I I think for me the reason why I don't have Terra Mystica and I have Clans is because I think Clans I'll be able to get to the table with my group two times for everyone I could get Terra Mystica to the table mm-hmm. just yeah, for I can like see that. for the heaviness thing for one, but the other thing too is like. I don't know. I've got some friends who like have really big hangups on themes and like you are the anti version of that. You're like, maybe not quite like, Hey, yeah, we're sacrificing humans to say on themes. And like, you are the anti version of that. You're like, Maybe not quite. Like, hey, yeah, we're sacrificing humans to Satan, but it's a cube pusher and it's really good mechanical. You'd be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's just cubes. It's just, <laughs> it's just cubes. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not quite that, but I mean, like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, you're able to pretty much, like, scoff at a theme. Like, these guys are like, I don't know. Like, I don't like worshiping these things. And, like, the same thing with Kemet. Like, the fact that you sacrifice things in Kemet to, get to like, deities and stuff is the reason why I don't own it. That game is so good as far as like uh like fighters on a board game, but instead right. I own Ennis because it's like less hey you're making human sacrifices to gods kind of things. <laughs> so, right. I mean, yeah. I, I don't get too worked up about theme really personally, but you can only play games by yourself so many times and you need other people to play. And so like right, my yeah. wife is really squiddish about like themes like that, and then like a couple of my really good local friends are like. I don't know, man. I I don't know, but like I think they do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I understand the whole theme thing, and you know, there's some stuff that I don't want to play too for those same reasons. But most of the time, it's just cardboard and some cubes. I mean, you're just moving stuff around, so I really could care less, honestly. Yeah, I, I'm getting that way too, more and more. Like, although that said, I have had an obsession this week with wanting to buy a game called Brew Crafters. Like, I don't know why I can't stop thinking <laughs> yeah. about it. Like, just the theme of it seems so cool. Like, you're brewing craft beers in your own little brewery. It just seems super cool. So Right, yeah. Well, anyway, I played Clans of Caledonia. All right, that's sweet. Yeah, that's a good game. Um, another game I played, probably one of the best games that I played this weekend, is Rise to Nobility. And this is a, recently, a recent Kickstarter, I think. I think it just released this year or something. But... Essentially, it's a worker placement game with dice, so I'm in because I love that. That's my favorite way to use dice. And this is a recently a recent Kickstarter, I think. I think it just released this year or something. But essentially, it's a worker placement game with dice, so I'm in because I love that. That's my favorite way to use dice. And really, all it is is you're going around collecting goods, converting those goods into resources. But the way you have to do it is... I don't want to say convoluted, but it's different. Like you have to make sure you have enough um, influ or um, reputation or something to use that many pips on your dice. So you only start out with like fourteen reputation, so you can't use all of your dice. So if you roll a bunch of sixes, then you're going to be able to take like two actions. So you're trying to use your dice to up your your reputation, and then go around to collect goods, build buildings on these sites. So when people go there, you get extra bonuses. Uh, it's everything I like in a game. Farming, resource conversion, contract fulfillment. Uh, it's a good game. It, yeah, I saw a picture that you put on the Riveted, put things, and there's like some right, kind of yeah. three layers of symbols for conversion that happens when you go there. And like, yep. it involves dice. So I could tell you loved this one for sure. Like, just based on the picture, like, I would have pegged you as a big fan of it. So it looks kind of neat, actually. I think I would play it for sure. Uh, it yeah. doesn't. It doesn't seem like it does anything too terribly new. Um, like it just does it fairly well. It sounds like, yeah, th- there aren't any new mechanisms in it, honestly. Um, and it may even go on a tad too long, but it was still fun the whole time I was playing it. So I can overlook all that because I had a great time. So who cares about the rest? I guess. You know the other game that I'm like pretty convinced you're going to be in love with once it's not three hundred dollars to buy is uh, Feudum. That game looks really up your alley too. Oh so. yeah, I'm. I want to play it, and yeah, it's out of print, or you know, it's not in print, and it's expensive, and yeah, you know, I have to wait. We'll have to save our dollars and hope that we can buy one at Origins or something. Play it, and yeah, it's out of print, or you know, it's not in print, and it's expensive, and yeah, you know, I have to wait. We'll have to save our dollars and hope that we can buy one at Origins or something. Like we'll be like <laughs> yeah. little, we'll be like little kids. We'll be like, we got our feudum. <laughs> like we're sprinting to a spot to like set it up and play it. Like. 
<laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I don't know if you ever saw that kid. He was like a meme for a while that he got like a Nintendo 64 for Christmas. And he was like, Nintendo 64. <laughs> like, it's just really funny. Like, maybe one listener funny. out there gets that meme. That would be us with Feudum. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Rising Ability, you give it a, I would play it again rating for sure, at least. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. That was a, the guy who brought Kingdom Builder over also brought that over. <laughs> So that <laughs> that game's far superior so he's, to Kingdom Builder. <laughs> he's still your friend. Like he's just in a neutral yeah. standing after that. Yeah, yeah, that that's true. Like the other thing too is when you're playing someone else's copy of Kingdom Builder, it, for it, making fun of it, so it was all good. It, does he listen? If so, we're just kidding. Like Kingdom Builder's awesome, and <laughs> I'm glad you own it. No, <laughs> he knows it's not awesome. I don't know if he listens or not, but I think he said it was. He was trying to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, like mine's for trade for sure. And it's really good, people of BGG. You should trade me your copy of Brewcrafters for it. <laughs> <laughs> it probably goes for about the same amount of money, honestly. Possibly. Really. Possibly. Yeah, but I don't know. People want Brewcrafters and Kingdom Builder people know what it's up with it. So, <laughs> Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right. The last one I played was Clank in Space. Um, I mean, like. It's just a deck builder where you move around and do stuff. But honestly, I got rid of trains. Like we mentioned trains earlier because of this one. Um, I feel like this one's different because it's not like a, every card's available to you deck builder. But in a right. way, those every card's available to you deck builders. Like, I don't know, Clank, they're neat because they minimize luck quite a bit. But at the same time, you add at least five minutes of gameplay in the front and then probably 10 minutes of teardown time in the back when you're sorting things out. Whereas when you can throw everything in one stack and just throw it in a box, like it kind of goes pretty quick. And it's kind of fun to see what comes out in the variety of like being able to time it just right. So I don't know, clank, clank in space. It's just clank. It's just clank with like a little force field mechanism in it. So you can't run in and run out as fast as you know, you might other times. Um, right. I like it quite a bit though. It's, I mean, it's fun too. Cause every card in it is some kind of joke about Star Wars or Star Trek or something. So yeah. Have you, pl- have you played regular clank? I haven't. I mean, like, I've seen people playing it, and, like, I know the criticism of it is that you can... It's a viable strategy, people say, but you can run in, grab some treasure, and run out, and then try and kill everybody else. Um, but I, I think I would really... I, I don't know. I think I'm a weirdo, because I think I would probably be, like, one of those weird, one of those weird people out there who has room in their collection for Clank and Clank in Space, just based on, like... I don't know. I think the theming in this would be enough different that it'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I mean... I can see that. I think I would actually, I think this is one space game that I would actually like. And yeah. I don't know. I th- I think it gets rid of that whole going in quickly and getting out quickly thing. And that was my only issue with the original Clank is that one piece. So the space version seems a little better to me. Yeah, they definitely changed that up. Put the modular board in and then put the, uh, like, it, it's like you have to go a certain number of places before you can open up the second half of the board. All right, Jason, this was kind of your idea. It's a cool idea. Um, we're going to actually, I think, break this into four parts. Uh, we're looking at the top 20 on Board Game Geek, and we're going to kind of break them into two categories, games that we've played and games that we haven't played, and break it down 10 at a time. Games we haven't played and break it down 10 at a time. Um, so I'm going to step back and kind of let Jason just take over on this 10 here, and I'll chime in when when it's right. All right, sounds good. All right, so number 20 on... Um games we have played or haven't played and why is mansions of madness second second edition um so i haven't played this one but i have played first edition and it was okay but it had like the overlord deal where you know it was everybody versus that person and it took like an hour to set up and that lost my attention right away so i don't know how this one goes but i heard that it's a little better with the app so i'd be willing to try it I've I own it, um. So I've obviously played it. I own it. Well, I guess not. I guess there's plenty of games I own and haven't played yet. But um, <laughs> yeah. I own it and enjoy it quite a bit. Enough to the point where I actually I don't even remember what I traded, but I traded something kind of. But I traded something kind of valuable away for first edition Mansions of Madness because you could actually use the tiles and miniatures from that game to play in second edition with the app. And so everything you mentioned oh, nice. as things you don't like. 
is totally solved with the second edition. There's no Overlord anymore, which that's the worst. Like, there's a game called Nuns on the Run that I absolutely yeah. love that game. It's so fun. It's my favorite secret movement game because you're like playing as nuns trying to get like whiskey and stuff and like, <laughs> right. and, like sneak men into your room and stuff. But like one person gets one person like, OK, three people get to have a ton of fun sneaking around trying to like, you know, canoodle with these guys or whatever. And then one person has to play as like the yardstick measuring line of sight security camera. And it's like, so three people have a ton of fun and one person doesn't. And that's always the case with overlords. I have not. Right. Yeah. I know there's people out there who like, are like, I really enjoy playing the overlord. It's fun to try and kill people. Like I've not yet found a person that I'm like, Oh, you do like that? Like I pretty much not. And I personally hate it. I like, feel like it's a chore that you have to do it. One in every four plays of those kinds of games. And so with the app coming out for this in descent, and Imperial Assault, like FFG is doing a really nice job of getting rid of that Overlord thing. And so getting rid of that and then the te- this teardown and setup that you'd mentioned is like pretty much not there anymore because you don't have to track things near as much as you used to have to because um, the app does all of it for you. So it's super quick to get on the board and get it playing. So, I mean, like maybe it would take 10 minutes to set up and then you play for close to an hour probably and then you tear down and it takes five minutes. So it huh. solves a lot of your problems with the first edition. I think you'd like this one. If you liked first edition at all whatsoever, I think you'd really like it. So yeah, yeah. my two cents. I enjoyed it. I mean, yeah, I enjoyed it as much as I like most Cthulhu games. But yeah, the after waiting 30 minutes to get started while the Overlord prepared his decks and stuff, I was, I was done. But yeah, that was fun. All right. B- BGGCon filing a Meritrash games is pretty spooky <laughs> for you, I think, Jason. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> All right. So, number 19 on this is Blood Rage. Um, this is another one that I haven't played. It, I probably should play it because I've heard it's more of a Euro than it really is a Meritrash. But I just, there's too many stupid minis, and it's essentially just a drafting game, right? With some minis. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. how it works? Yeah, so like this one, the minis kind of are important because I mean you could replace them with cubes, but you'd have to have a lot of different cubes. So you have to be like the big cube has this power and the little cube has this power. So like miniatures actually are functional in this game, um, but it's right. an area control game and a card drafting game. And then there's some like powers and tableau kind of things that happen a little bit. Like when you get certain characters, like they. So there's one guy that when he comes into a region, he just wipes everybody out. So, like, that's kind of cool because it gives, like, a fresh start to a spot and gives you kind of a lead. And then there's, like, you know, so, like, that's kind of cool because it gives, like, a fresh start to a spot and gives you kind of a lead. And then there's, like, you know, just all these different powers. And then each clan kind of has different ways they play a little bit, too. So, um, it's just a neat game. It's just area control, though. And uh, the thing I like about it is this is the first game I ever played where it was, like, you didn't mind dying as much. Like, um right. I don't know this, this game. And there's some other ones that have done it since to where like, it's like Scythe, for example, like when you die or lose combat in Scythe, like you don't lose a ton of resources and it's super expensive to you. Like that's been my biggest beef with games with lots of conflict in them. It's like some guy across the table is like, I'm going to lose any chance of winning this game in this Civ building game. Cause I'm going to fight you and have conflict with you. And then I'm going to lose like half my troops, but it's also going to kill like half of your troops in the meantime. And we both are going to lose now because we fought and no one else is going to fight. And like that always feels stupid. Well, in this one, if you fight and you get pieces eliminated, you go to Valhalla and like you can score. So it handles conflict much better than a lot of games do. Um, but it is, it's a work, it's not worker placement, but it's a card drafting game and area control game for sure. Hmm. Yeah. I'd, I'd be willing to give it a go. I don't even, I didn't know you. Do you have it? Is that what you said? Yeah, I do on it. Oh, yeah. Next time, maybe we'll have to play it. I'll give it a try, see if I like it. You, my prediction is you go. Oh, that's a game. Um, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't think it would crack your top fifty. I think you'll think it's fine. I think you'd play it as a favor to me, but like I don't know that it's in your top fifty. It's in my top ten. I really like it. Yeah, that's cool. My All son right. didn't care for moving it much on. either, but yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. moving on. A uh, game that we both love and both own is Viticulture Essential Edition. This is number eighteen on BGG. And this game is probably one of my favorite worker placement games out right now. I love this game. Every time I play it, I love it even, I love it even more. Solo is amazing. Two players amazing. Just so smooth. Great game. I don't know what else to say about it. It's amazing. Yeah. I'll talk more about it when we do the games that we like love in this thing for sure. 
But like, this is definitely one that, yeah, it's not going anywhere for my collection either. Yeah. All right. Next is number 17, and that is Arkham Horror, the card game, which this is another one I haven't played because I'm not a big Arkham Horror, Eldritch Horror fan. And this just seems like another, we're going to give you one set now from Fantasy Flight, and then we're going to release another one in three weeks. So you have to keep buying stuff because this game is, there's not enough in the box to keep you playing more than once. I don't know. Not something that I'm super into. I I own it. I actually have a lot of it. I have like all the first cycle of cards on it and then like the first big box expansion on it. And I really do like it, but more about why I like it later. But I can understand why you wouldn't like it really honestly. Expansion on it. And I really do like it, but more about why I like it later. But I can understand why you wouldn't like it really honestly. Yeah, it's just... it's. Eh. It's pretty thematic. It's not super heavy on mechanics. There's a lot of bookkeeping. Um, right. So, I mean, I can understand why it's not your your cup of tea. It's really story-driven, too. So, it's really telling a really rich, thick story. Um, and, like, if you're, like, theme, take it or leave it, like, this isn't going to be your thing. So, I get why you haven't played it. Right. All right. So, number 16 is Mage Knight, which I've never played. This is Vlada Shvatel, I think. Is right. that who that is? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I haven't played this. The only game of his I've played is Code Names, which is kind of sad. But yeah, M- Mage Knight. I don't even know anybody that has this, so I wouldn't even have a chance to play it. What what uh, I would say about this one is the, what's kept me from playing it is the cost. Like it's always been a kind of more expensive game. I don't know. Maybe I should look into play them at some point because they've got to be good for right. a reason, you know. But this one I've never yep. played, and it just feels like it's a lot of heavyish game for like being an Amara. A merit thrash trash type game, really. Um, I've don't. Right. I've never even researched it that much, honestly, either. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should look into this one more. The other thing too is it's Vlada Chivato, which every other one, every other game of his is like brilliant. The other game is like the next game that comes out is like absolutely terrible. So I don't know if this one's brilliant or not. <laughs> but like some of the games people think right. are brilliant, I don't like. Like Galaxy Trucker, for example. So anyway, I've never played it. Yeah. All right. Well. We may have to try that sometime at a BGM con if we can find a copy somewhere. Um, all right. Number 15 is Agricola, which is probably my second favorite Uwe game. And I've played this one a lot and I like it. Same. I used to own it. I replaced it with a game coming up in the list, but I own it and played it. So there's there's uh, no reason why we that uh, second favorite Uwe game. And I've played this one a lot and I like it. Same. I used to own it. I replaced it with a game coming up in the list. But I own it and played it, so there's there's uh, no reason why we haven't played it, because we have. Uh, right, yeah, agreed. All right, number 14, it was number one for a super long time, and that is Puerto Rico. And I have never played that. Um, I have some friends that have it that, I don't know, I just, it looks, and this is terrible coming from me, but it looks horrible. Like, the, the art <laughs> is wretched on that game. Yeah, it is. So... Like every time I see it, I'm just like, man, I could be playing something else that doesn't look as horrible as this. <laughs> and like, I kind of trashed the Voyages of Marco Polo art, but I think the same guy who made Voyages of Marco Polo made the Puerto Rico guy too. <laughs> and like, he made Voyages of Marco Polo like years later after he'd been practicing for a while because that guy in the front of Puerto right. Rico is terrible. <laughs> he is terrible. <laughs> but when you crack it open and like look at the components in it, you're going to go, like, this is like cereal box cardboard. Like, it's not very good quality cardboard either. So, I mean, like, I don't know. It's just uh, it's just weird. It's a good chance to see how far games have come. But it's certainly still a solid game. The other thing, too, about playing this game, I think the reason why you probably haven't played it is because your your entry date for board games is a little late for it. So, but the people who play Puerto Rico have been playing it now for, like, 10 years. And, like, they have such elaborate strategies and they're so good at it that they would just absolutely crush you. And it wouldn't even be any fun at all. So, like, you need to find yeah, someone that you're going to say, hey, let's play this game together and, like, be bad at it for a while and then maybe never like it enough to really even keep playing it. So, I don't know, right. honestly. Yeah, I'd be willing to try it one time just because it was number one. And I'm sure it's a good game, but, yeah, it's just not something that I'm going to rush out and try to play. I'd rather play San Juan every time. I mean, San Juan feels 40% the same, but it's a lot faster and I feel like it's a lot better game. It's just not something that I'm going to rush out and try to play. I'd rather play San Juan every time. I mean, San Juan feels 40% the same, but it's a lot faster, and I feel like it's a lot better game, it, to me at least. Yeah, that's cool. 
Um, number 13 is probably the spiritual successor to Agricola, and that is Caverna. And I have not played this because I am a huge fan of Agricola, and this just seems to be bigger and not in better ways. So this is not one that I've played. I don't know if you'd like it or not, because it's not as heavy and as punishing as Agricola. Um, and that's why you probably like Agricola so much. But like Caverna, there's right. so many ways to feed people, and you don't have to worry about it near as much. It's much more of an afterthought. Whereas in Agricola, like every time you get ready to put something down in a spot, you go, wait, is this going to impact my ability to feed people when I need to feed them? And like, yes. you have to kind of think through that. And like on this one, like on this one, you just can on your last turn go, Oh crap, I didn't get any food. Okay. I can always do this thing to get a bunch of food and I'll be fine. So I mean, like, right. I don't know. I kind of like it for that reason because it makes it a little bit more accessible to people. Um, and it has this kind of cool adventuring mechanism too, but. I don't know. I in hindsight, I don't know if I was going to trade one of them away, Agricola or Caverna. My tastes have changed enough now that I'd probably trade Caverna away and keep Agricola. But I won't. They're enough similar that I won't change my mind and do that. I'll just hang on to what I have. So anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah I want to try Caverna. I think Jim and Kim have it, so maybe I'll have them bring it over sometime so I can play it. But yeah, Agricola is definitely staying in my collection. Yeah, we we need to do our big family show. I was talking to my brother about that tonight, just because even if these people aren't like regular contributors, we mention enough people by name on this show that like we need to have them on at some point to just talk. So like my brother, <laughs> right. Jim, Kim, Katie, everybody needs to get on the show. At one. Corny. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, number 12 on this list mm-hmm. is War of the Ring Second Edition. I know nothing about this game and I haven't played it, but isn't this like a Scotland Yard type game? Uh, it's, it's like a fighting game, but like, uh, uh, yeah. it's like a war game, obviously, but it's like, uh, it's got some weird gimmicks about it. I've never really played it, but I've learned a little about it. And I think from what I understand about it, like the, one of the things that people are kind of critical of is that you can't fight a war until you're engaged in a war, which is kind of weird. Um, but I don't yeah, know. That is weird. It's, it's like the grandiose, like, it's like that scene where all the, like, tree beard looking dudes are fighting at the end of, uh, Lord of the Rings. Like, it's that scene of the movie, from what I understand, on a board game. So this is where, huh. like, hey, correct us if you want to in the riveted, if this game's awesome and we're missing something. But, like, I don't really even know much about it. It's, it was really expensive for a long time, too. It was out of print and it was a couple hundred bucks in on a board game. So this is where, huh. like, hey, Correct us if you want to in the riveted. If this game's awesome and we're missing something, but like I don't really even know much about it. It's it was really expensive for a long time too. It was out of print and it was a couple hundred bucks. Um, and like now I'm just I don't know. There's other things I'd rather play that have come out since. Yeah i I like the theme. I like Lord, uh, Lord of the Rings a lot. This just it looks like Risk every time I look at it. So I'm just out. Yeah. All right. So number 11 is our boy Stefan Feld, and it is Castles of Burgundy. Uh, I've played this once. Uh, it was okay. I didn't particularly love it. There are w- other Feld games that I like way more, but it was okay. I mean, I, I thought the way that the dice were used were was interesting, and uh, the building of the the city or whatever out of the tiles on your board was kind of cool but outside of that we love it it's our sport and i got it and i played it and i like read through the directions afterwards to see if i wasn't missing something because it just felt like oh that's what people are way into and i think i played it twice maybe three times um but i put in the notes here and i still feel this way i have joel meh felt like eating bread after its (laughs) expiration date like that's (laughs) Pretty much what it felt like to me. I don't know. <laughs> I I didn't think it was that bad, but I mean, it was not. I mean, Trajan's way better. Bora Bora's way better. La Isla, I like that one way better. So it's just eh for me. Yeah, Bruges for sure. And then Amerigo. Oh, I'm yeah. like way into Amerigo right now. Like I missed it in the sale. There was a recent sale where it was 25 bucks. I wish I'd have been able yeah. to get it. But Amerigo's got some cool mechanics in it too, even. So there's other felds that we just prefer, I think. Yeah, Amerigo actually feels like an Uve game with like the the polyomino deals where you're putting them on the on the board in certain ways. I can't explain it too even. So there's other felds that we just prefer, I think. Yeah, Amerigo actually feels like an Uve game with like the the polyomino deals where you're putting them on the on the board in certain ways. It seems like Feld and Uve got together and had a cool little 
collaboration on that one. I know they didn't, but that's what it feels like to me. Yeah, the thing about it that it looks cool to me or sounds cool to me is that tower where you put the pieces in the top and then like not all of them fall out. So like it kind of randomizes yeah. what pieces you have to work with. I think that's kind of a cool that's mechanic. That's the Shogun Tower. Yeah, and and like and like it's like it's designed poorly intentionally that stuff gets stuck in it and like like it's like a dice tower with weird red, like ridges and lips in it. So like yeah. yeah, it's supposed to have, you know, maybe green come out primarily on one round, but like red will pop out and it's like, wait, were they stuck in there or what happened? You know? So, <laughs> yeah. so I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> so those are the games, I guess that you and I haven't played, which ones let's go through real quick here. Which ones we haven't played in the top 20. We like this game a lot and play it solo, honestly. Um, but I'll talk more about why I like it when we talk about why we own or like these games. Mage Knight never made it. That box art's kind of weird too. Like, and it's just an expensive game to just kind of buy and not have people that I know that enjoy it. Uh, Agricola, right. we both have played. Puerto Rico, you've never played, but I would guess honestly that has to do with more the timeline of your board gaming experiences that that game's been out for quite a while. And I don't know, there's just other stuff that kind of has replaced it, honestly. Uh, Caverna, I've played, you've not, but you like Agricola. So you probably like this one. You may not like it like you like Agricola. Um, and I guess the appeal, too, is like I think if you were to guess, if I were to guess, I would guess if there was a copy of that pur- sweet purple box and a copy of that sweet tan box there, you're going for the purple box every time. So, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> War of the Ring second edition, neither one of us have played because we're not huge conflict gamers either, really, honestly. So, they're really, honestly. So, no, I'm I'm out on that. It's super expensive at one point too. Castles of Burgundy, we both have played, but neither one of us are like going to write home about it. So uh, that's what we had in this 10. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce at this point um, a new hashtag. So use this hashtag and I will honest to goodness follow this on Facebook. Hashtag convince the mechanics. So any of the games that we haven't played, like tell us why. Tell us why we should have played it and why it's a great game and why we need to go out of our way to play it. So hashtag convince the mechanics. Is the hashtag I want you guys used on that, and I'll I'll track that for sure. So, anything else, Jason? Nope. I I'm just excited to get into the top ten of these bad boys and see what each of us have played and what we haven't, and that could be interesting. Which that will be next episode. So I'm mostly excited for the feedback we're going to hopefully get from the community saying what you guys have never played. I don't even know which game it is they're going to like freak out about, <laughs> or what you guys. Uh, or what you guys don't love castles in Burgundy and have like special embroidered pajamas that are castle of Burgundy fabric. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do have the pajamas. I just don't like the game. I have I have a Steffenfeld body pillow, but I don't have <laughs> Castles of Burgundy. <laughs> Uh, I, was the ta- I was talking to Katie about this, and if we ever had any shot of getting Steffenfeld on the on the podcast, I think we might have uh killed that chance at the last couple episodes <laughs> he has a restraining order like certainly has a restraining order against us at this point like his people have heard yeah. when have gotten wind of us and they've we will not be allowed in the same convention halls as him ever in anything so <laughs> yeah that's all right all right uh so we'll do we'll do the top 10 at some point depending on when that interview happens that's uh that's cool um, I'm going to give a shout out to Mike Picorni because he got active on posting something of what he played. So did Sarah. So um, thank you guys for getting busy posting on the Riveted. Um, that's kind of like your space, guys. We want to be able to have an exchange with you guys on the Riveted. Um, whereas Board Game Mechanics, you know, our Facebook page, it feels like it's, you know, you guys can definitely comment and do some stuff up like right on the wall and stuff. But it feels like that riveted space is really our fan space that we really want to interact with you guys. So thanks for getting involved over there. We really like think that's cool. Um, but a shout out to Mike too, who gave us gave us a couple more referral names and posted some stuff. So he's definitely our super fan. We've got to like we've got to like Skype him in one of these times or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't even know where he's from. It, like, so it could be interesting. We might have to record at like three in the morning or something. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think he's, I don't know. Well, anyway, Mike, you got like, you got a minute of our show and we've never met you or anything. So you must be pretty <laughs> yeah. cool. If you want a minute of our yep. show, go over and get a minute of our yep. show, go over and get involved in the rivet. It's pretty easy to get a minute. <laughs> Ask Mike. So. <laughs> yeah. Just post one picture and you're in. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. All right. Well, hey, thanks, Jason, for talking with me and uh, letting me go on weird tangents and stuff, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, I'm the one that talked about the weird dude getting arrested when I got my tire changed, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah, I'm the one that confessed about having a Steffenfeld body pillow, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. It's super it's tasteful, good. like super tasteful. I promise. <laughs> And I, uh, I, it's not like I like sleep with it or cuddle with it. Like I just set it up in a chair. And when I'm playing solo board <laughs> games, I like pretend like he and I are playing a game together. So, I mean, whatever. It's cool. It's not creepy. I want to play a game. I want to borrow your pillow so I can play a game with Stefan Feld. That sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. And it's got like, I know he doesn't actually have a monocle, but I like slid a little <laughs> monocle on so I can put a monocle on his eye. And like he smokes a pipe sometimes, which is weird because he's made of fabric. But because he's a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh, all right i guess we should probably quit because this is getting really weird <laughs> it really is you're right <laughs> uh, all right hey thanks guys for listening uh we'll catch you next week play something fun this weekend think of us post about it appreciate it thanks see you <laughs>